So last time what we learned is that if you have the equation of a quadratic, you can actually find the x-intercepts by factoring the trinomial and then setting them equal to zero. Now remember that the reason that we're going to replace the y value with a zero is because any time that you cross the x-axis, y equals zero. So I'm going to factor my trinomial. Now whenever you do not have a number in front of the x squared, that's when you can just put your parentheses in the x's right there. List the numbers that multiply to give you 3, so 1 times 3. Those two do add to give me 4, so that becomes a plus 1 and a plus 3. Now once you have that thing factored, remember that if you have two things multiplied together and your answer is 0, then either one of them or both of them could equal 0. So I'm going to take whatever is in my parentheses, x plus 1, and set it equal to 0. x plus 3, also set that one equal to 0. Now after that, all I need to do is to solve the equation for x. So I would subtract 1 from each side, and I've got x is equal to a negative 1. Or on the other side, if I do the same thing, I subtract the 3, that gives me x is equal to negative 3. So these are my two x-intercepts for that quadratic equation. And remember that you can also check your answers by going into your calculator and typing in the equation, the original one, so plus 4x plus 3, hit the graph button, crossed at negative 3 and negative 1. So those two are the right x-intercepts. <clears throat> so what we're doing today is the same idea, but we are going to have some different kind of factoring problems. And also, not all of our equations are going to be set equal to 0. So that's actually going to add a step in. We're going to have to solve each equation so that we do have equals 0. Then we're going to factor the trinomial, set the factors equal to 0, and solve for x. Now when I say solve e each equation for equal to zero, all that means is that if you have something on the right side, like you have a number that's not a zero, we're just going to move it over to the left side. So the opposite of a negative two would be to add two to each side of that equal sign. And when I do that, I need to rewrite the left side of my problem. Now none of these are like terms because I've got x squared x and a constant, so I can't combine anything. I'm going to rewrite this in standard form. So x squared goes first, the positive 3x goes second, and the constant goes last. Remember the numbers without the letters always go last. And now this thing equals 0. Okay. The reason why, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Now that I've got that taken care of, it's the same thing like what we were doing yesterday. I don't have a number in front of my x squared, so I can go ahead and put my x in the front of each parentheses. I'm going to list the factors of 2, which could be 1 times 2. Those two do add to give me 3, that middle term, so I'm going to take a plus 1 and a plus 2. Now once you have that thing factored, go over to the side and take each one of your sets of parentheses x plus 1 equals 0, or the x plus 2 equals 0. Now all you need to do is to solve each of those equations for x. For the first one, if I'm trying to get that x by itself, the opposite of a plus 1 is a minus 1. So that gives me x is equal to negative 1. On the other side, I have plus 2, so the opposite of a plus 2 is to subtract it, which means I have x is equal to negative 2. So those are my two answers, and you can plug this into your calculator to check. But if you're going to check on your calculator today, do the one where you have equal 0. So x squared plus 3x plus 2, hit Enter, or the graph button. And I'm crossing at negative 1 and negative 2, so those two did work. <clears throat> so example 2, this is the same idea. I've got to move everything over to one side so that I have a 0 on this side. Now, the opposite of a negative 6x is a positive 6x, so I'm going to be adding it to each side of that equal sign. When you do this, be very careful. I want the left side to be in standard form, which means the highest exponent goes first, the term with the regular x goes second, and the constant, the number without the letter, goes last. So plus 5 equals 0. Now that I've got this thing set equal to 0, I can do my two sets of parentheses, and I can go straight to those because I know I don't have a number in front of the x squared. List the numbers that multiply to give me 5. That's 1 times 5. That does add to give me 6, so that's the pair that I need. 
plus 1 and plus 5. And now that I have this thing factored, and it is set equal to 0, by the way, I can say x plus 1 equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. Now that you've done that, it is just the one-step equation. On this one, I would subtract the 1 from each side and get x is equal to a negative 1. On the other side, I subtract the 5 from each side of that equal sign, and I've got x is equal to a negative 5. Example 3. Okay. Now, I don't have equal 0 on this problem either, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my line through my equal sign. I'm going to move the 2 over to join those other terms. It's a positive 2, so the opposite would be to subtract 2 from each side. Now, remember that it is very important to make sure that you put the left side of that equal sign in standard form. So the highest exponent would be 4x squared. That one goes first. The regular 7x goes second. And the negative 2 is last. Okay. So we do need to factor this problem, but this is actually a different factoring problem than we've seen in a while. This is one of those when you have the number in front of your x squared, where you multiply the first number and the last number. So 4 times negative 2 is going to give me a negative 8. I'm going to list the numbers that multiply to give me that. So negative 1 times 8, negative 2 times 4, 1 times a negative 8, and 2 times a negative 4. You need to pick the pair that adds to give you that middle term 7. Now negative 1 plus 8 gives me 7, and what we're going to do is replace the middle term. So I've got 4x squared minus 1x, it's positive 8, so plus 8x, and then minus 2. Now the reason that you did that, and all I did was break apart the 7x, is now we have this thing written as four terms, so we can do factor by grouping. Now because I have a 1 as one of my numbers, my greatest common factor can only be a 1. Between x squared and x, I take the one with the smallest exponent. To figure out what you put inside your parentheses, that's when you're going to divide 1x from each one of those terms. 4 divided by 1 still gives me 4. If I have x squared divided by x, that's still an x. Negative 1 divided by 1 is still negative 1, and those x's cancel each other out. Now between the numbers 8 and 2, 2 is the biggest number that divides into them, and because I see a plus sign right after that line that I drew in, I need to take out a positive 2. So 8 divided by 2 gives me 4, and I still have that x attached to it, and negative 2 divided by 2 is a negative 1. So now I do have the exact same thing in both sets of parentheses, 4x minus 1. So that's part of my answer. And whatever is outside of the parentheses, that's the other part of my answer. Now at this point, I dropped the 1 because 1x one is the same thing as a regular x. But if you want to leave it there, that's fine. Now don't forget, we factored this thing, and it's still going to be equals to 0. Now that I've got my two factors, and that one did require a little bit more work, I'm going to say 4x minus 1 equals 0, so that's my first set of parentheses, or x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. Now for this first equation, there's two steps on this one. Remember, you are the x, your boyfriend or girlfriend is the one attached to your hip, so the coefficient, your friend is the constant. Well, at the end of the day, you want to get rid of your friend first. Otherwise, you're going to make your boyfriend or girlfriend very mad. So the opposite of a negative 1 is to add 1 to each side of that equal sign. Cancels out on the left, and it's going to leave me with 4x is equal to a positive 1. Now, the 4 is attached to my letter x, which means that they are multiplied. The opposite of multiplying is to divide both sides by 4, which means my answer is x is equal to 1 over 4. And I do want you to leave that as a fraction. Now, if you divided it, you would have got this decimal, but remember if you press math, enter, enter, it'll show you that that's still just 1 fourth. So that's half of my answer. For the other one, it is just a one-step equation. I subtract the 2, and now I've got x is equal to negative 2. So I've got my two answers, 1 fourth and negative 2.
Last example. <coughs> now before I can do anything else, I've got to get an equals to zero. The opposite of a positive 8x is to subtract 8x from each side. It's going to cancel out on the right and give me the equal zero that I want. And on the left side, I need to make sure that I put it in standard form. So 4x squared is going to go first. Then I need the regular term with the x. And then finally, I'm going to put the constant at the end. Now this is another one of those problems where I have a number in front of the x squared. So I've got to do 4 times negative 5. So that's going to give me negative 20. So your factors could be negative 1 times 20, negative 2 times 10, negative 4 times 5, or the negatives could be the other way around. And remember that you do want to pick the pair that adds to give you a negative 8. So in this case, I need positive 2 and negative 10. We're going to replace the middle term with those two numbers. So 4x squared plus 2x's, minus 10x's, and then minus 5. And you can put the equal 0 there, but if it's kind of confusing you right now, just leave it off until you get to the factoring part. So I'm going to cut this thing in half. Between the numbers 4 and 2, the biggest number that divides into them is 2. x squared and x, I can take out a regular x. Now to figure out what goes in my parentheses, I'm going to divide 2x from each one of those terms. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. x squared divided by x is x. 2 divided by 2 is a positive 1, and those x's cancel each other out. <coughs> now on the other terms, 10 and 5, the biggest number that divides into both of those is 5. And because the first thing I see after that line I drew in is a negative sign, I need to take out a negative 5. So I'm going to divide that from each term. Negative 10 divided by a negative 5 is a positive 2 and still have the x. Negative divided by a negative here gives me a positive 1. Now I do have the exact same thing in both sets of parentheses, so that's going to be half of my answer. That's the 2x plus 1 part. Now the outside, the 2x minus 5, is going to be my other set of parentheses. And don't forget, this thing was set equal to 0. Now that I have my thing factored, my quadratic factored, I'm going to take each set of parentheses, so 2x plus 1 equals 0, or 2x minus 5 equals 0. And I need to solve for x. So I'm trying to get x by itself. Now, in order to do this one, I need to subtract the 1 first. I've got to get rid of the friend first. Now, 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's going to cancel out and just leave me with the 2x on the left. 0 minus 1 gives me a negative 1. The 2 is attached to my x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2, which ends up giving me x is equal to a negative 1 half. on the other side. Trying to get x by itself, I've got to get rid of the negative 5 first, so I'm going to add 5 to each side of the equation. That cancels and gives me 2x is equal to a positive 5. And in order to finish getting it by itself, the x, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and now I've got x is equal to 5 over 2. So my answers are negative 1 half and positive 5 over 2.